paper coder person. And he makes a lot of money, but the cool part is so many times he gets to go to work in like shorts and sandals and a hat or sit at home in his pajamas and on the computer and do his work. But I know the cool part is at least a few years ago he was working on a program or doing some coding where they would, it would go into hospitals and it would help disperse medication to patients. So even though he's home in his pajamas working, he's doing some phenomenal great work and that, that could be something you guys could do one day as well. So, um, and I guarantee you, you guys can code way better than I ever thought I could. So keep it up. It sounds like you guys all enjoy it and that's a great thing. John Paul? So for any one of the students, so what's your favorite uh, part about coding that you that, what's the thing you like the most about it um, my favorite part about coding is probably just you can like the part where you can just really mess around with stuff and eventually you'll figure stuff out yourself and you can eventually build like bigger or more blocks of code to make your character sprite do more so I just really like the aspect where you can just play around and do different things. And one of the, the cool things is about a year ago I, for my job, I got to go to the Google headquarters in Ann Arbor. Um, and it was awesome. Uh, you walk in and there's a giant screen like that, a flat screen. And it's telling you what people are Googling at the moment. And if you ever seen the movie, the, the Google movie, I think it's called Interns or the Internship. Um, <laughs> Everything that happens in that movie is actually the way it happens at Google. There's ice cream uh, all around, there's uh, snacks, there's video game rooms, there's sleeping pods. I couldn't believe it. it it's, it's actually true. And uh, just like Mr. Piggott said, um, they're all walking around in shorts and flip-flops and uh, you know, they just kind of rolled out of bed and came to work and they're loving what they do. Keep it up. Thank you. John? First of all, how great are you guys? I mean, just how great are you guys? I have a page full of, you can see like stars and exclamation points, and I don't even know where to start, and I will try to keep it short. But to kind of piggyback on what um, Mr. Piggott and Mr. Torres were saying, I actually um, work in IT for GM, and I am now really super sad because I don't get to go to work in shorts and flip-flops ever, <laughs> ever, ever. And they don't have ice cream or snacks there for me, so. Um, but, but IT is, is an amazing place to be, and I belong to an organization called Women in Technology. And Women Who Code, or Girls Who Code, is, is a really huge part of the mentorship and things that we try to do as, as a woman in technology. And I, I share all this with you because the statistics show right now that if you sign up to, to go into information technology or computer science when you start college, your retention rate is roughly around 12 percent, meaning only about 12 percent of those people actually stay with it and graduate from college. But if you start in middle school, and my goodness, you elementary school students are like way ahead of the curve on this, but if you start in middle school and if you're mentored in middle school and high school, your retention goes up to 92 percent. Um, because you get that it's hard and that sometimes my friends are all going to be going out and I've got to stay and do the work, but you've already got that love of learning and that, and that perseverance piece um, that your teachers talked about. So you, ha you have a foundation that is just extraordinary and there are such great things in your futures. I couldn't be more excited for you. I couldn't be more proud of the work that all of you are doing every day. And I also just want to thank all of your sponsors and your teachers for taking the time out to give you guys these opportunities because, oh my goodness, you, you are learning amazing things about teamwork and collaboration, and thinking outside the box, and not just going from step A to B to C to D, but how can we be creative and go from step A to D and eliminate all that waste in between? And that brings such value to the organizations you might work for someday, to your own households, and to the lives of others. So I just, I'm, I'm just so proud of the work you do and just stay with it. It's, it's magnificent. I'm so excited. Thank you. Any other questions? Elizabeth, uh, we get delivered these packages by some of those students, so. So the students, we kind of voted in some of the clubs. The Girls Who Code Club actually received shirts. So you guys got a sampling of that shirt on top of the Google, which is not very tech savvy, but it is a Google notebook with a regular pen. Sorry, it's not some tech savvy pen. But, so we voted, we would like to give you something as showing our appreciation for letting us come here. 
as well as the appreciation for the coding expansion within the WSD. Because even though it's just us represented here tonight, we have Google CS First in almost all of our elementaries after school, as well as Girls Who Code in all of our secondaries, including Durant, has a club going. So we're, we're, we're moving. We're, we're getting those people in, like we just said. And girls and boys both are moving. So I just want to add one more thing about the staff that you've gathered. Because yes. I think it says a couple of things. As you point out, Corey Holand and Jessica Blicklock are music teachers. Sarah Johnson and Michelle Robinson are Mason language arts, science, and math teachers. You don't have everybody here tonight. Kelly Detterman, school craft and Riverside art teacher. Uh, Pam Bauer, ASD teacher from Haviland. Uh, Susie Crawford, Donaldson, fifth grade. Jessica Johnson Grace in fourth and fifth grade. Laura Chapman from Pierce, middle school math and science. Caitlin Hyla from Durant, language arts teacher. Andrea Stebbin, of course she's the academic dean. Of course we've got Elizabeth and of course we've got Steve Smith, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think that says a couple things. One, it says the kind of staff we attract to this district, that they're not just committed to one focus curriculum area, that they believe in educating the whole student. And two, for the students, when you want to go work for Google or you want to be an uh, engineer or you come back and be a teacher because we can use you in 10 years as teachers. So, you betcha. You betcha. Elizabeth, thank you very much. No, thank you for having us. I'm, I forgot one thing, all you guys. If you have a, a parent or adult in the audience, could you have them stand for us? Thank you very much. I'm going to let us walk out very quietly. Absolutely. So next we move to information items and we start with Mott High School Spanish trip to Costa Rica. Mrs. Stone. Mott High School is requesting approval for a Spanish class trip to Costa Rica, uh, March 28th through April 5th, 2019. Charles Belcher, Spanish teacher from Mott High School, will provide further details to the Board of Education. A recommendation to approve the proposal would be presented under new business. Approval would be rescinded if the area to be visited was issued a travel warning. Good evening. Um, like Carly said, um, I'm Charlie Belcher. I teach Spanish at Mott and Durant High School. I teach Spanish one and two. This is my third year in the district. Um, and I would really like very much to be able to take a group of students um, on a study abroad trip, or a trip abroad rather, to uh, Costa Rica next year, spring break. Um, some of the places they'll visit, um, they'll start in San Jose, the capital city. Uh, we'll meet up with our tour director from there. We will visit um, places like a, a volcano, the Poas Volcano, Hot Springs, uh, the Monteverde uh, National Park. Um, we will also visit Manuel Antonio National Park. There may be uh, activities including zip lining, uh, swimming in the ocean, uh, cultural activities like uh, painting an ox cart wheel, uh, of course, you know, trying, sampling different uh, foods tropical fruits, um, and sightseeing, things of that nature. Any questions for Mr. Belcher? Joan? I just want to say I, I don't think you've come before us before, so I think this might be your first trip. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for taking that on. Um, I think these are incredible experiences for our kids, and it takes someone like you who's willing to do all the work to help them with fundraising and to organize and to orchestrate and to work with the tour groups and to, and to supervise and chaperone. And um, these end up being life-altering experiences for these kids. And 
for you to make that opportunity available to them is is um, remarkable and I just want to thank you for that and also this trip is on my bucket list and has been for quite some time so I'm a little bit jealous but really excited for all of you. There, there may be room for more chaperones. <laughs> you let me know. Rob? Oh, that was my lead in is yeah I'm available <laughs> but why Costa Rica not Spain? Uh, uh, part of it's the cost uh, it's you know it's closer so it's significantly cheaper to go to Central America than it is Spain. So I'd rather go to Costa Rica anyway, so I just want to yeah. put that part out there. I, I wasn't presuming that, but I wasn't sure if there was, yeah. and, and I think it's prettier from the pictures I've seen. Yeah. My son had an opportunity to do the Spain trip for his senior year, and again, he, he enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, I'm hoping this is the first of many trips abroad. This will be my first one with Waterford. Thank you. Great, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Board will take action next meeting, and if any board members have any well, questions between, contact Mrs. This, Stone. This was the uh, one of oh, the this is, oh, this is later down? This I'm was sorry. our previous meeting, Thank and you. so we're doing both uh, information and action on several items this evening. Great. Thank you. Next, we move to bid pack 1803, Mesa Middle School Renovations and Mott High School HVAC upgrades. Yeah, continuing in with that statement that uh, you're going to take action tonight on the first three items that we go through. So. Uh, uh, we've received bids from the Mason Middle School renovation and the Mott High School HVAC upgrades. Uh, those include uh, Mason, a full parking lot, window and door replacement, uh, flooring replacement throughout the whole entire building, uh, light up, lighting upgrades, uh, including the dimmer switch is very popular with the, uh, with the uh, teachers, uh, painting, uh, cabinetry work, uh, bleacher replacement, and then uh, the bridge across uh, between Mason and Grayson, um, there's, that'll be restored. Um, at Mott, uh, there's a rooftop unit, uh, HVAC, for the North Gym. Uh, it's a similar type of unit that was at, replaced at the Kettering PAC a couple summers ago. Um, next bid pack, uh, T2. This is video. Oh, I'm go ahead. sorry. I, 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 go ahead. So we'll, do, we'll, t we'll take them one at a time in case there's yep. questions. That's fine. Go ahead, Mary. Um, is there, is, I guess I'm just looking through this packet, is it broken out? What's that? Is, Pardon me? It's in the, it's in the, it's the. Yeah, when it comes down to the action item part. 11B. 11B is what? It's broken out? Yeah. That's where the action item is. No, I know, but where is the. Like, so it, all this, uh, just a small paragraph right here, so that's all that we have on it, other than what you just verbally told us? Correct, and then if you look at 11B, you can see where all the bids came in for what renovation? Right at the end. 11B, okay. Um, all right, so my question is, um, why is it that um, you bring this to the board for our approval? Is it, like, why do we see, I mean, because when you look at 11B, it's very, very specific. You've got all the companies, you've got the prices um, of their bid amounts, and I'm just asking why we do it. Is it because it's in our board policy and our bylaws that this is the process when the we state do of bid? Michigan requires uh, anything yes. over twenty-three thousand dollars for a capital improvement to be um, to be approved by the board? Right, and it's also in our policies that we approve um, anything like this renovation. Uh, it's very clear in our board policies that we do this. So I guess I'm just checking that we do follow policy when we do, when we do bond issue things. Clearly, we yes. follow yeah. okay. the state awesome. laws and other state requirements. Okay. On just check, checking why we why we we're so specific in this instance. Um, I just wanted to make sure. Do you have a, never mind. No. Any no. other questions? I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'll, Bill, do you want to take the next one? Yes. Uh, Surveillance uh, uh, video and uh, cabling infrastructure is the next one. Uh, again, this was is, is on action for tonight. Uh, currently, we have 160 cameras. This will increase our camera um, coverage to four, over 400 cameras. Bill, when, do you remember when we first did cameras? It's, has it been 10, 15? It's been a, I, I don't know the dates on it. It's been a very long time with, uh, I know, um, the cameras that we use now, um, they, they're, they're so old that we have right. to use replacement parts off of other cameras. I guess my point <laughs> is we've, we looked at school safety in this district for decades. 04, 05, according to Ron. Yeah, 13 years, yeah. yeah. So, 
Uh, Bill, will this be inside buildings and outside? Correct. Perfect. Okay. I Any have... questions on this one? Sure. Yes. Okay, so this is part of um, the bond issue package, the big package that we Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. So in this case, so it's the same kind of scenario that we had a big passage of money